Because God is always upgrading us too. Right. Well, well. God always has something to say yes. to us. Yes. And we need to learn to pay attention. Amen? Uh, this week, there were a number of uh, serious prayer requests that went out. And uh, the point is that prayer requests are not just there so that you can click on and say, uh, hit that icon and say praying, hit that and take those words and say praying, or whatever the case might be. I send you a prayer request. Mm -hmm. What is my expectation? That you're going to pray. That you're going to pray. Yeah. Isn't that right? Amen. So if God already told us in His Word, Luke 18, Luke 18, Luke 18, if He already told us in His Word, what his expectation is, what do you think he's expecting us to do? Amen. To obey his expectation. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Your baby, your grandchild, or, or your neighbor, or somebody come up to you and tell you what their problem is, what do you think they're expecting from you? They're expecting you to do something. Isn't that right? Bible tells us in John chapter 2 that when Jesus went to do his first miracle, there was a problem that came up. When that problem came up, his mother came to him and his mother told him what the problem was. Yeah. And, and Jesus says, uh, what does that do with me? Now, I, don't you know I must be about my father's business? But she did not interfere any further. What she told everybody else to do is what? Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. So you, what, what I'm trying to get at is yeah. you and I have expectations of God. My, my, my. What do you think he got of us? Well, well, Amen. All right. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to try to short circuit and pull it tight so that we all get the same snapshot picture that we can go with. Amen. I was down in Jersey, and there's a witness in the house. And I was in this worship service, and one of the things that caught my attention was this person was so wrapped up in Jesus that the tattoos on her body said something about God. I, I sit there, and, and it caught my eye. Yeah, I got a picture of it. But what I'm saying is, if you and I are manifesting by our behavior, talk about last week, right? All right, all right. Your behavior will say something about your testimony. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. Then what happens is, Somebody's going to see it. And there's going to be some kind of response. Well, Either as Jesus went to tell this parable. And I'm going to start out in King James. Just read you a few verses. We're going to pray and then we're going to drop anchor. And then we're going to try to uh, spend some time with loved ones. Amen? Amen. And Luke 18. Beginning with verse 1, King James right now, but I'm going to transition. The script says, And he spake a parable, it was Jesus, right? right? Unto them to this end, that men ought always, what? Pray. To pray. pray. And what? Not, Not faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Well, see that? See, see. And he would not for a while. All right. But afterward he said unto who? Himself. Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow 
troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she what? Weary me. In another translation, it's going to say, Wear me down. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge say. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night, yes. amen, unto him, right. though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. All right. Thus, in the reading of God's Word. Eternal God and our Father, we pray this morning that you will help us to see and understand the importance of the persistent prayer of a widow that couldn't help herself. All right. You said in your word that, uh, that 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 without God we can do nothing. Lord, we couldn't get up and dress ourselves. We couldn't arrive at this destination. Yeah, yeah. And Lord, we won't even be able to maintain yeah. enough of our own posture yeah. to hear what you have to say to us today. Lord, if we close you down in our minds. We won't understand what you're trying to get across. Yeah. So, Father, by your Spirit, we pray that you, in the Holy Spirit, will work on our hearing and our listening so that, Lord, like the unjust judge, we will recognize the need to pay attention to you. Father, we thank you right now. We ask, oh God, for all those that you have uh, blessed throughout the persistence of prayer this week, that God, they will continue in their healing. We pray for that soul that's near as hell. We pray for that person that is, 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 is offering up all kinds of resistance, trying not to hear you, knowing all along that they need you. So, Father, by your Spirit, would you bless our time? Would you bless your word? Would you bless your servant in Jesus? Amen. Now it's important for you and I to understand. See, I, I, I've already given you the props yeah. for what we're going to talk about. This All right. Amen. And 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 the thing is that you and I need to understand that God is always speaking, and whether you and I hear Him or not, He is always in a area where he is communicating with us in special ways. Now, in the New Living Translation, I'm going to read this thing afresh. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show them. Are you hearing that? This is why he had this discussion. There are times I might do nothing but read straight, flat, vital. Amen. But you see, there are times when I need to give you a little more detail from a different perspective. And, and that's what this, this, this uh, translator said about Jesus. He said he told his disciples a story. Amen. And really told his disciples this story, the text says, to show them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That they should always pray and what? Not give up. Amen? Anybody ever prayed for something God didn't give you what you thought He ought to give you? And Anybody ever had a, had a problem? You know, one of the wonderful things that uh, I, I am kind of transparent about, I tell you straight up, well, there are times I hit this pulpit and I'm in pain. God take that pain away and then by the end of the message, he, you know, it has its own way. I, I guess it got my zip code or my area code or something because it shows up back. Amen. But you know what happened throughout this weekend? I'm marching all over the place. And God kept the pain at back. When I wasn't with everybody else, I was going on the front of the and twisting and oh, is it there? Is it there? So how should I walk? Should I, you know, all that kind of stuff. But God. 
took care of you. He said, pray, yeah. and what? Don't faint. Now, now, has he moved it all together? When I walk in these doors, when I went into the worship service the other night, and, and oh yes, I, I, I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe in the power of healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Why do I believe? Because God said, yes. and because God showed it, and because God has done it in so many ways and in so many times. Amen. Yeah. And because he has done it, and because he has proven himself over and over and over again, I just take God at his word. Right. Amen. Right. And Jesus himself, he stopped in the middle of communicating and dealing with his own disciples. And he says, I, I need to share something with you. All right. So, so, so if you look at the text, uh, the very first phrase, he says he spake a what? A parable. What's a parable? A parable is not necessarily, is not an actual event. A parable is a story. How about those stories that you teach your grandchildren when uh, you're trying to get them to understand something? One of the things that uh, I have to uh, apply is that my grandkids, they're going to ask, what does that mean? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. See, and Jesus told this parable because he knew he needed to help his disciples to understand what he meant. Yeah. Earlier, he had, he uh, the disciples asked him, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus gave them a model of how to pray. But then what happens is, you and I get good at the model. Well, I'm going to say something that I hope I don't offend you. But at the same time, I hope I do. We get good at the model. Amen. And we rehearse the model and stop praying. Did you hear what I said? We rehearse the model, but we actually stop praying. And 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 I'm gonna just throw a couple things out at you and and hope that I will help you to understand what I mean by that. There's hard work in prayer, then there's hard work of perseverance in prayer. And then there's hard work of believing faith. Believing faith. Some of you know, and if you've been around for any period of time, you'll know that there was a season in my life where I, I never had a problem believing that God could do what He said He could do. I never had a problem believing anything I see in the Word of God. What I had a problem with is believing that He would do it for me. That's believing faith. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's practical, applied, believing faith. I used to have an issue with that. Amen? All right. And then there's hard work in trusting God as you pray. Amen? Come on, let's look at this text. The text says that he spoke a parable unto him. Why? Unto his disciples to this end. What was Jesus trying to accomplish? So that men, he said that men might always pray yeah. and what? Yeah. Not faint. Jesus wants his disciples, he wants us to understand that he himself has not changed. Jesus, God, is immutable, which means that he changes nothing. He said, ask and what? Seek and you'll knock and the door will be open unto you. Amen? Amen? He told us to pray. James picks it up and says that, that many times we, 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 we ask and we receive not because we ask it on this. Amen? Amen? And he also said later on we have not because we ask not. Are you understanding where we're trying to go right now? So, so Jesus is is communicating and he's talking about the consistency of praying. Amen. So he told his disciples this particular parable. He, he, he crafted this parable so that they could understand. Amen. And a good, well-crafted parable can go a long way. Now, the important piece about you and I as we craft a parable. Amen. See, the parable could be your own personal testimony. Are 
Are you understand? They just don't have to know it's about you. And in some cases, it's good that they don't know it's about you because people have a tendency to lock on you and not on the God that you're trying to get them to see. Amen? All right. And if they see you do it, they'll do what you do. And if they see you stop doing it, they'll stop doing what you do. They will get to the point when we were growing up, we, we, we learned to pray the same way the old veterans prayed. We would sit there in the church and them old deacons would say, God the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. He who rules and super rules. And, 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 and that's what we learned. We learned to mimic them without the understanding of what they were trying to communicate. And all I'm trying to get you to do, I want to push you closer to the Lord so you get into such an intimate relationship with the Lord that you can say what you want to say. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, yeah. even if you say it different than somebody else might yeah. say it, yeah. the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit knows how to interpret what you're saying and communicate. I, I, I remember on one occasion many years ago, my wife and I, we were, we were at home and we were having prayer. And then she said something. And when she said what she said, I turned around and I called her prideful. And I told her, I said, who do you think you are? Telling God, help me to see you like God. Uh, help me to see, see me as you see me. You ain't God. And I also had a young man to tell me on occasion when I was sharing and counseling and coaching him this guy on job. And he got upset. I, what I told him was the truth. He couldn't argue with the truth. But this is what he said. To grave, to grave. You may know God, but you ain't God. So, 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 see, see, sometimes it's good that your testimony might be disguised yeah. in a healthy power. Amen? So that you are pointing them towards God. And even greater testimony is when you can find that same story in somebody else's narration in the Bible so that after you get done with it, you can point them back to the Bible. Amen. And, and they say, wow, God said all that? God put all that in here? I thought I heard somebody say this morning that they read something about in Ecclesiastes the Bible says that there's nothing to do under the sun. See now, I say something like that, they look, wow, they're ready to quote me. But then when you point them back and say, well, you know, I borrowed that off the board. And I didn't have to pay him because he said his word ain't going nowhere. Amen. Are uh, you understanding where I'm trying to go? So the Bible said that Jesus tried to tell the disciples, he, he crafted this story. And in crafting this story, it was because, now I can assure you, that if he told them that parable, there was a need for it. Is there anybody that has problems sometimes when you're trying to pray? Do you have problems because sometimes prayer becomes hard work? Has anybody ever tried to pray and can't keep your mind on what you're praying about? Has anybody ever been trying to pray and seem like all kinds of other thoughts keep coming your way? Have you tried to pray and all of a sudden the kids are, are tapping on your door? Have you tried to pray and folks yeah. start interrupting you even while you're trying to communicate and keep folks on God? Why do you think that's happening? Anybody remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and he had been in the wilderness, he prayed and fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says that while on that 40th day, he's already worn down. I will promise you right now, when you are tired and worn, the enemy knows it and it's going to be hard and difficult for you to pray. So I tell you, hard prayer is hard work. It's hard work when you're tired. It's hard work when you're weary. Watch this now. Anybody ever tried to pray when you're mad at somebody? You know there is a remedy. God taught me a remedy, a personal remedy. When you're mad at somebody, when somebody get on your nerve, when somebody that, ah, uh, you sanctify. Amen. So you ain't going to say 
that there are people that you just can't stand. Right. Because y'all hope. You ain't going to admit that. Well. Not for God. Mm -hmm. Even though God already knows you already how you feel. Uh, but I don't want sister so-and-so to think, oh, she's going to think I ain't superb. But one of the things that God has taught me about the hard work of prayer, when folk done got on your nerve, or when folk can't stand you, and when folk you can't stand, is to go back to the Word. Well, he said, if you got an all against them, go to them. He said, if they got a heart against you, go to them. Right. Ah, y'all caught that, huh? Right. See, he didn't say wait on them. He said, go to them. Now, in addition to that, he taught me to look for the value add in people that are driving me nuts. All right. What am I looking for? Well, I heard you talking about the Sunday school lesson and about how the Hebrew boys how they put themselves out there for God. Yes. I would look, God taught me to look at that person. Look, Jesus said, pray and faith not. I would look at that individual. I would look at what drives them. I would look at what kind of power they were exercising well. against me. Well. And I would begin to pray, God, if he had pointed that energy towards you or towards saving someone else or towards witnessing to somebody else, he would be a dynamic, powerful witness for you. Do you say, oh, all right. See, it's hard work. But when I begin to turn this thing around well. and I begin to look at them as somebody that could do some serious damage against the kingdom of evil if they were doing it for the cause of Christ. Well, well. That hard work, watch this now, was not my hard work, it was God's hard work. Amen. Here's an expression that if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? So the Bible says that he taught his men, he said, you need to first of all pray and don't faint. So even though they're getting on your nerve, and even though they're wearing you down, and even though you are tired, sometimes you have to slip away in your secret closet. What do you do when prayer becomes hard work for you? How do you persevere? How do you keep it going? Yeah. The uh, parable, which is I'll tell you straight up, this ain't no matter. But when I was working in the refrigeration industry, and I was surrounded by folks that, that they knew their thing, and they knew what they were doing, and they knew I was praying for them. Because when they would lay the smut out on the table, and I would lay the gospel out on the table, they would uh, slide my gospel out of the way and spread their smut even further. And now it becomes not only hard for me to stand as a solo individual. Think about what you heard in Sunday school. Yeah. These three Hebrew boys are called and committed themselves to God that we're going to do things different. We're going to try to do it God's way. But while we're trying to do it God's way, watch this now, there's a timeline on me. And sometimes when you feel that there's the pressure of time, amen, see there's the pressure of envy, there's the pressure of meanness, there's the pressure of hatred, there's the pressure of, of resistance, now there's the pressure of time. Well, How do I get past this time thing? Well, I need to learn to persevere. Yeah. Jesus says, I want you to pray and don't faint. Mm -hmm. Don't faint. And then he says, now here to give you an idea of what I mean by not fainting, it was a judge. And this was an unjust judge. It was a judge that didn't like nobody. He didn't care about nobody. He thought that he was the cat's meow, sort of like some of these political leaders right now. 
and those folks that are telling you all kinds of things that they're going to do this and they're going to do that. You know, a lot of folks are more scared now than they are thinking about what we should do. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and Jesus told them about this judge in verse 2. This, this, this judge. And the judge, listen to his attitude. He feared not God. See now, God does not pacify us. So why should you pacify yourself? God doesn't pacify us, so why should you pacify those folks that are out there trying to pump themselves up yeah. rather than yeah. engaging in the hard work of prayer and being persistent in prayer regardless of what the situation and circumstances dictate? This man, he said, this Jesus himself, he didn't fear God. So if he didn't fear God, what makes you think he's scared of you? And the scripture goes on to say that. He didn't fear God, and he had no regard for man. But there was this little widow. And this young widow, little widow, she was in the city. She came to him in verse 3. And she was saying, avenge me of my adversary. And true to form, what happened? Well, he wouldn't do it. Ignore it. Push it to the side. Let her go. So now, her burden gets heavier. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Doc, you haven't told you what you you got a problem. Amen. All right. And you trying to work out, and you trying to figure it out, and you trying to get some kind of remedy, and all those kind of things. And what happens? It starts weighing you. And when you don't see answers coming, it starts causing you to get attacked on the side of doubt. Yeah, yeah. Anybody ever doubted God? Huh? Anybody ever say, oh, well, I've been asking God and, and this thing ain't happening? I asked God and, 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 and nothing else is going on. Anybody remember, oh, here's a parable which is not a parable? Amen. Anybody ever remember how Samson saw a woman that he wanted? And his parent tried to point him back towards his God. Yeah, yeah. Samson said, give her for me. She pleases me. Have you done that in your prayer life? You got impatient with God? Well. God didn't answer the way you wanted. Yeah. God didn't answer at the time that you wanted him to. So you jump up and you're going to do it yourself. Jesus says, don't think. Amen? We need to be persistent. The Bible says that this woman was rejected. She was pushed to the side when Jesus was in the wilderness. And the, and the, and the sick came to him and began to proposition him. And Jesus rejected him the first time. Yeah. Did Satan go away? Now he double back. Yeah. Well, that sound like folks doubling down with their political aspirin. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get it in. And what happens is, he came back. If Satan can consistently yes. annoy you, Amen. if he can consistently drag your attention yes. away from lifting up your eyes into the hills from which come in your help, yes. what should you and I be doing? Jesus says, don't faint. So the Bible says that when Jesus rejected him the first time, how did he do it? Went back to the Word. Back to the promises of God. Amen? And then what happened? In a little bit of time, Satan come back again. Satan going to hit you with doubt. He going to hit you. A few weeks ago, I kept telling you that there are times when you need to get the chatter out of your ears. Right. We talked about how God says, when you start talking about your identity and start talking about your posture and start talking about how your behavior, some of our behavior is compromised because we allow folks to compromise us. You're hanging out with folks that don't need to be with you. If they are pulling you towards them, 
and you're not pulling them toward God, there's a problem. And did you hear what I said? Amen? Paul says what? Come out from among them. And what? Be ye separate. What? Say the Lord. He said, I will be your father. And you'll be my son's daughter. See, Jesus says, what? Pray and don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Because he's coming at you with doubt. He's coming at you with compromise. He will come at you to try to get you to compromise your position. Jesus in the wilderness, the enemy came back the second time. What did Jesus do? He rebuked him and rebuffed him again. How? By going back to the Word. Do you have any strong foundation that you're building on? What's, what is the key verse of our church? Upon this what? Rock. We're talking about the Word of God. I'll do what? Build my church. Now, when you're starting to struggle, do you go back to the rock? Do you go back to the Word to see, God, what can I do in this set of circumstances? What did the Hebrew boys do in their set of circumstances? I'll tell you in a little bit. So in first appearance, the Bible says that this widow, she would go back to him. Amen. And, 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 and in verse 5, yet because this widow troubled him, the widow began to persist. The widow did, she, she actually used some of Satan's strategy. Well. Satan kept coming after Jesus. She kept going to the king, the judge. And the Bible says Satan came the third time. And when he came the third time, Jesus turned around and rebuked him again. How? He went back to the Word. What are your foundational passages? Is there something that God has melted in your heart to let you know that I, I, I got you? All right. I know somebody whose life verses is, is I'm crucified, what? With Christ. Right. Nevertheless, what? I live. Yet not I. But Christ does what? Lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God who what? He loved me. And He gave Himself for me. Amen. So now, I, I, I go back and I grab on to that thing and I hold on to it. And I hold on to it. And I keep rehearsing it. And I keep rehearsing it. Amen. My, my, my passage says that, uh, uh, in Psalm 27 then. One and four. Yeah. And, and, and he would hold on to it. He say, you can be in the head with a spot hand, but you can't take my salvation. Amen. 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 So this woman, she kept going back to him and back to him and back to him. And she kept wearing him down. The scripture says that the king, I mean the judge, he got upset. My he said, yeah, verse five. Because this widow troubles me, yes. I will avenge her. All right. Why? It's because of her persistence. It's because she kept coming back. It's because she did not quit. It's because she was concerned about having her need and her issue resolved. Amen. 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 Let me ask you a question. If you know that God wants to save you, amen, the Bible says uh, that God is not slack concerning his promises. But he is desires that all men shall be saved, shall come to salvation. And if you know that that's a promise of God, and you know that you're not saved yet, amen. All right. Why would you wait and not just continue to pursue the Lord? Say, God, you said you desire that all should be saved. Yeah. And I know that I'm not saved. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm not walking with you. I can't confidently say that yeah. if you're absent in this body, I'm going to be home in the presence of the Lord. So God, if that's not working for me, why would you sit on the sideline and not continue to pursue Him? Amen? Right. See, 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 when, when the enemy tries to get you to change your lifestyle, amen? Right. If you had a habit, an addiction, guess what's going to happen? They're going to continue. I don't care if it ain't nothing but a TV car or, or a commercial on a bus or somebody to remind you of where you used to 
be. Amen. You need to keep praying. You need to keep praying. You need to keep praying and not faint, Jesus said. You need to be so persistent that you're going to grab a hold of God. What, anybody remember the story of Jacob? The Bible says that when the angels were coming up down, Jacob grabbed that angel and, and the angel said, let me go. Jacob, Jacob said, I ain't going to let you go to you. Are you understanding where I'm going? Jesus says, don't faint. And he told this story about a woman that had this need. Amen? Yeah. He said this woman, this widow was troubled. She was troubled and she had a need. And I'm going to slap something on you that you might not uh, have ever considered. But the scripture says in verse 3, there was a widow in that city. She came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but after he said, I uh, within himself. Though I fear not God, well, nor regard man, yeah. yet because this widow is bothering me, she's troubling me, yeah. I will avenge her. Amen. Do you know, we were sitting the other day, and the baby said, I'm an orange, 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 I'm an orange. Boy, that started getting on my nerves. I got up, went back out to the car, put oranges in my pocket, brought them back in. And now, I, now I wasn't gonna just, just, just let her know that she done woke me down. Hold up. I sat down, and then all of a sudden, she circled around. She going, I'm on hard, I'm on hard, I'm on hard, I'm on hard, I'm on hard. See, she was persistent, and that thing started driving me nuts. I reached in my pocket, I pulled out the arm, she grabbed the arm, and going by the other. Jesus said, the judge said, yeah, yeah. Now. I was judge in that situation. I didn't have to give it to him, but I did. And he says, because this will trouble me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she will weary me. Now let me see what that says in this other translation. Uh, he says, then the Lord said, listen to a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice yeah. to his chosen people? Right. Well, how did he give justice in the end? When the widow kept uh, 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 repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy, the judge ignored her. Yeah. Amen? All right. God is not ignoring you, All right. but he wants you to be persistent. He said, ask, and what? It shall be given you. Shall is not optional. Amen. Even for God. He promised that he'd never leave us or forsake us. He promised to meet our what? He didn't say about your greed. He promised to meet our need. Amen. And then he goes on to say, uh, 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 the woman said, give me justice in this dispute. The judge ignored her for a while. Well, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. Yes. But this woman is driving me crazy. You hear that? Amen. And then he says, I'm going to see that she gets justice. Why? Because she is wearing yes. me out. Yes. With what? Her constant request. Are you consistently calling on the Lord? So that God might hear you. Even if you don't understand, you should still be talking on the Lord. But then there's hard work of of, uh, of <coughs> believing faith. This has been an extremely trying week. And we sent out numerous different prayer requests because of the multitude of things that were happening. And, and, and when you're constantly being bombarded with well, all these different issues, it's hard for you to think straight. It's hard for you to stay focused. It's hard for you to get things done. But what should be easy for you, because it should become natural to you now, 
The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. All things are what? Pass away. All things are what? Become new. See, the Bible says Jesus comes to dwell in us. So where I go, he's there too. The problem I walk into, he's got that problem too. And the thing is, he wants me to release the problem to him so that he can work the problem and show me how to deal with the outside circumstance. When I started getting calls, and I got a call about a preacher and a pastor who had just been uh, 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 weighted down, amen, because one of his members had just died. And the circumstances were the kind that would weigh your heart heavy. And now he's trying to coach and counsel and minister to the family and trying to prepare homegoing services and all these other things while there were a number of things already on his plate. Amen. When we got the word, what did we do? We did what God said to do. Amen. We ought to come together. We ought to pray one for another. That's why I sent out the prayer spread like I did. And, and I can assure you that I'm very, very targeted when it comes to that kind of prayer spread. I'm not sending it to somebody that's just looking to pat themselves on the back. I'm sending it to somebody that believe in the power of prayer. I'm sending it to somebody that believe that God will answer. I'm sending it to somebody who is going to be persistent and get out on their face, on their hands, on their knees, grab God and, 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 and hold on to Him and say, I'm not going to leave. And, and there were times when I'm thinking about them and I, I, I realized, I said, wow, I have haven't even eaten today. Why are you understanding what I'm saying? Say, 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 when you're serious about God and what God wants to get done, your focus is off you. Amen. And all that I had on my agenda became back burner issues. So I, I, I stopped what I was doing. I rearranged life and I went to support this pastor. Now, y'all know I talk about this old hip of mine already. I'm, I'm, I'm moving around. But let me tell you, I went into that service and I stood the whole term. And I stood in a position and every once in a while I would raise a hand so he knew where his prayer team was. Are you understanding? Yeah. He knew. He had somebody praying for him before they marched into the sanctuary. Yeah. I shot him a text. I say, I'm here. I'm on site. So that what? Yeah. He knew that yeah. there was somebody that was going to pray with him all the way through the service. Amen. At the end of the service, we again, we got together and we communicated and we had fellowship and all those kind of things. Talking about the hard work all right. of believing faith. He was thanking me, praising God for our being there. We stood there at the end of the foyer of the church and witnessed how God was touching hearts and lives and our folks were coming up and, and, and expressing gratitude and thanksgiving. I took some pictures of young teenagers right. and young, this new generation of folk that say, oh, you know, I, I, I'm real grateful for this and that. And what did he do? He shared parabolically his story, amen, through the Bible so that they could hear a story of faith, of hope, of help, of God. And as he shared those things that we left, then I got another call. Same pastor. His wife rushed into the hospital. Emergency. He said, Brother Graves, I need you to to get your prayer team, well, yeah, 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 get them back working, get them back working. His wife spent time in the hospital. Later on, I'm shooting a couple of texts. I say, how's it going? They ain't seen her yet. This was 11, 1 o'clock, 2 or 12 o'clock at night. Check in on it the next day. I'm talking about the hard work of believing faith. See, 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 don't just look at it as a Bible study. You just say, God, how do I apply this in my life? How can I see 
your hand working in my situation, in my circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. He said they released us about 3 o'clock in the morning. I checked in with him a little bit the next day because I, I wanted to let them have some time for rest, etc., etc. He called me around midday the next day to let me know that they were at home. I'm talking about how God says the power of persistency in prayer. As he shared with me that she was home and God was blessing her and things did not get as complex as he anticipated because he already told me. That's why I identified it as an urgent prayer request. I already knew the prognosis and what the anticipated cure was. God turned all that stuff around. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? And the Bible, as well as that, He began to share with me. And then we began to get back to some things that needed to be addressed. I talked to Him the next day. Later on, I shot a message in response and I asked the question every time I talked to him first thing on our conversation was his wife amen, amen. so as I talked to him about his wife he said oh yeah well yeah I just I missed your call and yeah but we, we we just coming in from there are you understanding what I just amen. said I'm talking about a young lady who was so ill they had to rush her into the hospital and they spent all night in there and the prognosis and, and, and everything was nowhere near as bad as they had anticipated. See, they done been here before and, 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 and now they're going out to dinner. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, see, see. I'm talking about persistence in prayer. And, and, and we begin to praise God and talk about God and all that kind of stuff. And for those of you that might not know, that was the same pastor that 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 that, that walked us through our vows on this. And the young lady that I'm talking about was right there in that service yesterday. And she stayed. I know they were there after we changed. So they were there. Why? Because of persistence in praying. And because hard work in praying. And because yeah. of hard work of yeah. believing faith. And, 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 and yeah. here's the other piece that you need to understand. While all this was going on, you see, we had to learn to trust God. Amen. Because see, sometimes your dreams and your plans get changed. I had no idea what God was going to do. Then I got a call and 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 and, and I was asked for some information. And the first thing I want to know is how is our sister? He said she's sitting right here beside me. And what he called me for was directions to get to where we are. I need you to understand that, you see, we have to have a trusting, yeah. hard work of trusting God, yeah. taking God at His word, yeah. believing that God can, and not like the problem that I got stuck, believing that God would do what He said He would do. He raised her up. Yeah. He sat her in the car beside yes, yes. He brought her to the affair. And she was there to watch this now, to pray him through. Yes, Are you understanding what I'm saying? And to pray us through. Yes. And to encourage us. Yes. And as I mentioned earlier, the Hebrew boys, they are no different than you and I. Yes. They were in a world that they were planted in. Amen. You and I are right here in the 21st century. We are surrounded. Yeah. The Bible says that we are in a sin-filled society. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And the Hebrew boys were told, if you just do what we want you to do, everything will be all right. They said, well, 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 well we yeah. want to 
identify the fact yeah. that we yeah. belong to God. Right. Have you identified that you belong to God? Yeah. And not only do we want to identify that we belong to God, right. but we're asking God, that right. you give us just a 10-day reprieve. Yeah. Yeah. In this 10-day reprieve, just allow us to do what we normally do with our God. What do you do with your God? When you got problems, what do you do with your God? When, 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 you, when you got pains, what do you do with your God? Do you, do you take time and moan and groan and complain? Or do you call on your God and say, God, I don't know what it's all about. I don't understand what I'm going through. But God, I have read in your word where you are a prayer answering God. I have read in your word where you taught your disciples, don't faint, but be persistent. Don't faint. It's going to be hard work. Don't faint. Just keep on pressing. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is still, did you hear me? It's still in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. I want you to know that the Hebrew yes, boys, yes. they turn right around uh -huh. and they say, uh-huh, Mr. King, we yes. understand your yes. program yes. and we understand your plan. Well, 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 well. You told us that what you're going to do is if, if, if we bow down when we hear this music, amen, yes. how many of you keep jumping back to the old music, All right, yes. jump back to the yes. old habits? Jump back to the old, old, old way of doing things. Well, you said that if we hear this music and we bow down to this new statue that you got here, you understand what I'm saying? This statue that you'll let us go. But we need you to understand, Mr. King, we belong to God. And we know how God operates. And we know how God communicates. And we gonna do what God has told us to do. Yeah. So the Bible says that they refuse to bow down to the king. Yeah. Have you refused to right. bow down to the world? Right. Have you come to the place that you refuse to bow down to the finance department? Yeah. Have you refused to bow down to all these establishments that are trying to put their hands around our lives yeah. and manipulate us into being what they want us to be while we should be trying to be what God wants us to be. And the Bible says that, that, that the king got hot and angry. You know, when you take a stand for the Lord, there are going to be some folks that ain't going to like you no more. There are going to be some folks that are going to reject you. There are going to be some folks going to talk about you. There are going to be some folks that just going to flat out do whatever they can to get on your nerves. You know, uh, anybody in here ever had your property written on like this graffiti stuff? Anybody remember the time they did graffiti on the side of this, yeah, this, this yeah. of the church right here? Yeah. And we saw it, but let me tell you how God will operate. When I come back later on that day, the graffiti was gone. Mm -hmm. Till this day, I don't know how it got gone. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? All right. All right. I had somebody to write on my car in front of my house. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't in North Philadelphia. You understand what I'm saying? See, everybody try to blame everything on the area. Oh, no. It's evil. And the enemy will come against you no matter where you are. And what happens is that if you're trusting God like these Hebrew boys were trusting God, like this pastor was trusting God, like his wife was trusting God, like your pastor was trusting God, like our my lady and your first lady yes. was trusting yes. God. Amen. Yes. God will work it out. Yes. Hebrew boys, the man say he got hot. Well, he set the fire well. seven times hotter than normal. Yes. Got them all tied up. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. They tied them up. They didn't even want to give them a chance my, to resist my, 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 my. and fight their way away. Yes. Tied them up. Well. Threw them in the furnace. And the Bible says yes. the fire was so hot yes. that the guys that threw them in there, they got burned. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But by and by and after a while, if you are like this young widow, I don't know why I keep calling her a young widow, because I guarantee she must have lived a very pleasant life after that. Yeah. But if you and I are like that widow, and, 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 and we don't faint, and we keep persisting God, and we keep praying, and we keep working hard at getting through. Amen. Amen. If we keep 
uh, working hard at trusting God. If we keep working hard at believing God, if we keep working hard at doing what God wants us to do, these Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace. The king come and looked through the portal and he saw somebody else in there. He saw a fourth person in the fire. Amen. Has that fourth person showed up in your life yet? Has that fourth person showed up in your upper room, great room? Has that fourth person shown up when sickness came your way? Has that fourth person shown up when you had all kinds of doubt, when you were weary, when you were ready to just throw in the towel? That fourth person is right there. And the Bible says he's standing at the door and he's knocking. And if we listen to him, and open the door. He promised that he All will right. come in. Why? If we faint not. Why? Yeah. If we ask believing. Yeah. Why? Yeah. If we trust yeah. to receive him. Why? If he, we are willing and accept him. He said, but if everyone, but whosoever shall call upon yeah. the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Yeah. But as many as, as believe on him, yeah, to yeah, them yeah. gave he what? The power yeah. to become what? The sons of God, even yeah. those that believe on his name. I was also thinking about that woman that had an issue of blood. And when she had that issue of blood, she couldn't get through the crowd. She was in a place where she wasn't supposed to be. Because if you had that kind of disease, you couldn't be around other people. It was like the pandemic of that day. Not a mask. Get out of town. Stay on the outskirts. You don't go near normal people. But some kind of way, this woman kept praying. This woman worked hard at believing. This woman worked hard at trusting. This woman worked hard at believing that God could make a difference. She came through the crowd, to the back of the crowd. Some kind of way, she wiggled her way in, got down got down low and she did what? She just touched the hem of his garment. When she touched the hem of his garment, oh boy, I bet she got up faster. She had some stuff going on in her. Change was going on in her. And the Bible says, Jesus turned around and said in the midst of all that crowd, who touched me? Who touched me? The disciples were alarmed. What do you mean, Master? Who touched you? Look at this crowd. All these people bumping up against you. He said, oh no, I felt virtue going out of me. I felt a blessing going out of me. Has your blessing hit you yet? Are you still trusting? Are you still believing? If you're not, why not? I want you to understand that I want to close. But this ain't no parable. The Bible says after they had communion, and they went out into the garden. So they everybody with him. But he left some of them here. And he took three more. They went over here to another place. When they got to that other place, Jesus went in to pray. I want you to understand, even Jesus followed his own mind. Jesus told us when we pray, say what? Yeah. Our Father. Yeah. Yeah. When Jesus got into that garden and he left those other disciples, the Bible says that he came and he went to that place called God and he said unto his disciples I need y'all to sit here I'm going over there to pray and while I go over there to pray the Bible says he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee that's James and John and I want y'all to sit here they became solid when you go to pray, don't worry about how heavy your heart is. Keep your mission focused. Don't worry about how excruciating your pain is. Keep your mission focused. And the Bible says that they began to get sorrowful and they were very heavy. 
Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. But this is what your assignment is. See, sometimes the assignment is not for you. All right. Well, it's for somebody else. Yes, yes, yes. He says, This is what I want you to do. I want you to tarry here yes, yes. and watch with me. See, the watching is not just sitting there staring. It's to pray. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So he says, why don't you just tarry here and watch with me. And then he says, he went a little further, fell on his face, and he prayed. How do I know he followed the model? First thing out of his mouth. Oh, my Father. What did he tell us to pray? Yeah. Our Father. Identify who you talk to. Humble yourself yeah. before who you're talking about. Now, I need you to understand here's a theological thing that, that might mess your head up. The Bible says, as Paul explains later on, that he thought it not robbery to count himself equal with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He thought it not robbery to count himself yeah. equal with God. Yeah. But he also said, I always honor my Father. Yeah. And he said, Now, Father, if it be what? Possible. Let this cup pass from me. Do you see what Jesus is saying and what I'm challenging you to do? I said, prayer is hard work. When Jesus went that garden, that wasn't no, no, no picnic. Jesus was heavy. He was hurting. He knew what he was going into. You got an operation coming up? You, 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 you might be heavy. But you still call on your father. You identify your problem. You let it be known what you what you're feeling and what your concern is. But Jesus says, uh, if it be possible, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. amen. He says, let this cup pass amen. from me. All right. Amen. All right. Then he said, nevertheless, not as I will, thy will be. How many of you, when God didn't, didn't move pain like you wanted to, you went out and you jumped up on something else? Amen? Right. You went out and you did something. You went out and you pursued something. See, what's happening these days is folks are letting their heads get swollen by false promises. And what Jesus did as he went there and he prayed, and he said, not as I will, but thy will. And then he came back to the disciples. And what did he find? All right, yeah. Somebody talk to me. He found them sleep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So now I'm out there and I come back. Now y'all have no idea what I went through to get here today. But if I'd come in and, 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 and everybody's just all calmed out. How do I know? What kind of confidence can I have? that God then will pray for us. Now, I'm just your pastor. Jesus is our Savior. Yeah. If they did it to Him, what made you think, I don't think it won't happen to me too? Right. Amen. 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 So the message is all about persistent. Yeah. Persistent prayer is hard work. Yes, you may get weary along the way. Jesus came back and they would sleep on him. And he talked to them. And he left them again. Yeah. yeah. And he came back again. All right now. Same thing going. All right. Verse 40, 42, he went away again. Second time and prayed. Oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, what? Your will be done. See, see, now, why am I going down here to talk about how Jesus did this thing? I'm going to tie it back to our text in a second. And he came and found them what? Sleep again. Yeah. Amen? All right. Did any problem? Oh, we got you. We got you. We got you. Anybody ever said that to anybody? Uh, anybody ever said that to anybody? We got you. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me just uh, add something here. This, this, this is from me to you. See, this is something that, 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 that I learned some time ago. 
that when you go to pray for somebody, somebody asks you to pray for them, well, that's an assignment. Right. Did you hear me? That's an assignment. Now you got one or two choices. Reject the assignment. Amen. Right. Or accept it as your God given duty. Amen? All right. Now, when God gives you an assignment, what does that mean? Right. What does it mean? Do what? Right. That's his expectation. Yeah. When God gives you an expectation, let me see. Those that heard me make promises yesterday, I will, I will, I will. I am, watch this, watch this, I'm bound by the promise I just made. I'm bound by the commitment I just made. You ask me to pray for you. If I say we're going to be prayed, guess what? I just bound you to a promise. Are you hearing me? Amen. Jesus bound those boys. Well, well. That's why he took them over there. But I want you to also see everybody was at the table, but yeah. everybody didn't go over there. Only three of them heard that hard form promise. Amen? Y'all hear me talk about these, these urgent prayer requests. Everybody in the congregation don't get certain kind of prayer requests. Amen? But there's certain folks that are in that dynamic group. I consider you bound. Amen? Now you don't always have to tell me what you're doing, but God has a way of letting us know. The Bible says he came to found to sleep again, but the eyes were heavy, and he left them and went away again. And he prayed the third time. That's Jesus talking to his dad. His daddy done already let him die. Right. Amen. Amen. Verse 45, then he come up to his own disciples. And what did he tell them? Sleep on. Sleep on. Leave on. My daddy got this. Y'all, 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 y'all let me have it. Y'all, 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 you, 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 you didn't keep your word. Amen. I, I know that you're tired. I know that you're weary. Guess what? He was weary too. And then he got beat all night long. Now let me just drop, just, just, just connect this last dot. Amen. About how hard work of trusting God. Back in our text, it says. Yet, verse 6, the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge has said. Telling the disciples. The unjust judge said, I don't fear nobody. Amen. I don't fear God. I don't fear nobody. But this widow is bugging me. She's wearing me down. And since I'm tired of being woke down, I'm going to give her what she asked for. Now look what Jesus says in verse 6. The Lord said, Hear, pay attention, listen, what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry when? Day and night. There's your persistence again. If you don't think persistence is taught in the word, there it is. He said, won't your daddy, who's listening to his own elect, listen to them cry day and night, won't he do what? Won't he, though he hear yeah. wrong, bear wrong with him, yeah. I tell you, he will avenge them what? Speedily. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, yeah. when the sun cometh, shall he find faith. On what his last question is, when I show up, will I find the kind of faith that that widow had? Where she would even love an unjust person. Now, I'm convinced that if she was bugging that unjust person, she was talking to God first. And God was telling her, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. I don't want to 
be considered an unjust papa. Amen? She don't have to keep asking. But the point is, if I love her like God loves me, He says, God will speedily be mine. And you and I should be that way one with another. So that we might be able to encourage others by watching, by praying his last one, and doing what the will of the Lord is. Father, we thank you and we praise you for salvation, for forgiveness of sin, for your written preserved word for the person of the Holy Spirit who yes. lives in us yes. that will bring conviction to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. We pray, O oh Lord, that those that may hear and are listening and that may be struggling and that may be going through difficulty and, and those families whose hearts have been ripped open yes. and now they have the pain of trying to find some healing, that, Lord, they might not have to worry about whether those that have committed themselves yeah. to pray for them are praying. They don't have to worry about, about, about folks going to sleep and forgetting and neglecting them. But, Father, we pray that you will help us to remain faith-filled and faithful to the responsibility and the obligation that we have yeah. of praying one for another. Lord, may we be like this widow who yeah. will approach and seek and trust and receive from you yeah. the answers to our prayers. Yeah. And then, oh God, as you are answering prayer for us, may we be responsible enough to pay it forward, pay it behind us, Pay it beside us, pay it any way we find necessary so that folks will begin to recognize and realize that you are real and that you will hear and that you will answer prayer and that you will do it in a very appropriate manner. Father, we thank you right now for all that is being said and done. We ask, oh God, if there's any under the sound of our voice, any out in cyberspace that does not know Jesus in the free form that is sin. If there are those that are out there that have been praying and they've been frustrated because they have not received answers to their prayer, we pray that they will not be weary in well-doing, but trust that in your due yeah. season. Yeah. Amen. Lord, it might be somebody that's that's standing up against a solid wall and they need somebody to come up alongside them and to pray with them and pray for them so that God, they might, you might be knocking on the door and Lord, they might be so distracted by the things around them, by the cares of the world, by the fears and doubts and frustrations and all those things that the world, the enemy might be throwing at them, that they may need their ears yeah. unstopped. Yeah. Lord, may we come up alongside them and whisper, God is knocking. Jesus is knocking. Open the door. Let us be that sounding board to encourage them, O oh Lord, to just be still and know that you are God. Help us to help them to, 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 to just take a stand, O oh God and trust and believe in you. Father, we know it's hard work, but Father, you said that, that, that we can make this journey with your help. Father, we thank you right now. We pray that if there's anyone that does not know Christ, every head back, you have a desire to know him, the free pardon of your sin, just raise your hand and it down. We will pray with you. For those at home, we pray that you will identify yourself. We pray that if you have to call, if you, you, you are familiar with this, this branch of Zion, that, that you will let us know and we will try to get to you. We pray that you will just pray this simple prayer. See, there's another phase of this, this thing that Jesus was, was talking about. And we're not going to get to that today, and I knew we weren't. And that's the Pharisee and, and, and 
and the uh, the unjust sinner, that Republican. The Republican didn't even bother to lift his head up. He just beat on his chest and be merciful and be a sinner. You know you need salvation. Just Lord, be merciful unto me, sir. Lord, I'm a sinner. In need of your forgiveness. In need of your salvation. Come into my heart. Father, for those that are, are, are repeating such a cry to you, you said, ask and it shall be given, and we seek, we will find you. And we seek you. So, Father, we thank you right now for every soul that you're delivering from the jaws of hell. We pray that by your spirit, they too will come to know you in a joyful, personal yes. way. And you can also help them to understand the importance of persistent in prayer. Father, we thank you. Encounter, we thank you. Oh, I said thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let's give God praise.